Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Introduce yourself, and you may uh, proceed with your... Sean Drasher, Director of Elections, here with an update for you. Um, we'll start with in-person in -person voting for Election Day. Everything is on schedule. Machines are being delivered. They're about one-third out right now. Uh, no problems there. Um, Mail-ins, things, as you know, have been much slower than we wanted, but uh, we are caught up. And the numbers are good. I wanted to share those specifically with you. Uh, when we look historically at where we are at after the election on mail-in returns, we had a high point of 82%, and then it, trail, it trends down from there. It goes 82, 81, these per election. 78% uh, one year ago in the general, and it got down to below 50% in the primary. That is of uh, returned applications. Completed. And completed and returned. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, ballots. 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 Uh, we are already with the ballots that are sitting in the vault and taken in the mail. We're already at sitting at 74% and we have five days to go. We are trending to have a higher return rate uh, than last year and maybe even crack the, the all time. So despite the slow response, we are doing very, very well in returns. So uh, What's the raw number that you're so 74% works out to be... No, no, I meant of the, what's the total that you have out? Yeah. The total number we have out are, make sure I'm looking at the right sheet here, uh, 12,000. Oh, okay. 12,123. Uh, and we had two cancellations, 12,121 actual <laughs> ballots went out. Oh. And we are already scanned at 7146, and we have about 2,000 to scan today already. So that's going to put us. But a total of twenty thousand ballots went out. Uh, twenty thousand? What? No, no, no. The total of, of ballots sent was twelve thousand one hundred twenty-one ballots, with applications for the fall at twelve thousand one hundred twenty-three. So the uh, so that really that I I was very pleased, uh, especially with the delay of things just getting delivered slowly. That is a very 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 strong number for us. Um, for, let's, you still have you seem to have a question on that. Yeah, um, I had gotten the number twenty thousand previously. We have a, a range. When you look historically, we had a, a high point of over twenty thousand in um, with the pass of Act seventy seven, and we had a low. You know what? I didn't look up the low, but I could guess it was uh, sixty five hundred. But I don't have that wasn't a number I looked up okay. today. So we were looking. That's the broad range of what we can expect. Um, it is certainly getting more acceptance, so I would think we could slowly tick that number upward, but also people aren't in fear of going to the polls, so that's working against it too. So right now we came back down to about 12,000, just over 12,000. But you have 7,146 of the 12,121 ballots. Scanned. In Oh. It's scanned, so confirmed scanned. But we also have another 2,000 sitting okay. in mail trays to count today yet. And okay. that's before we get the mail today, before we get the drop box. Today. We have five days. Yeah, and we still have five days to go. We are trending to maybe crack our percentage record return. Before we move on from that, I just want to comment. I, I guess my nature is to be a bit defensive about how hard they're working over mm -hmm. there. There was a story in, on AB 20, ABC 27 that had, that had Lebanon County as the lowest number percentage lowest return of absentee ballots at 39%. Fulton County, I think, was next at 44% and so on. And this is a few days ago. Yeah, and a and high I, at 60, I think the high number was 60. Yeah, something percent. it was Cumberland or so, somewhere else. But I just want to point out, those are those are moment in time, you know, and what, what I think the, the station was doing was they, they you can look at, at the state's numbers <coughs> So what, what they scan in becomes part of the state's database and you can see, you know, by county what's come back. I talked to Sean about that, you know, that, that moment, if that moment was, was in the morning and as he says, they get 2,000 more and they, right. they scan those in by the end of the day, the end of the day moment is going to be higher. And admittedly, you know, our ballots were going out a little slower, so. And also because of the heavy traffic in the office, we yeah. didn't have any bodies or computers to scan right. in the ones that were coming in. So as, as you can hear, <laughs> we're set to break a record here. Yeah. I just wanted to point that out because I did, you know, I'm sensitive to it appearing as though something's going sideways and we're not getting these processed or something, but that, that's happening. It's just 
We're good. Just such a workload, especially last week when people yep. were standing in line. Right, he was along with you. Yeah. And your training is complete and so on? Poll worker training is complete. And in fact, uh, I wanted to address poll workers. We are at full coverage for poll workers. I expect we'll probably lose a couple in the next few days. We always do. But we have a long waiting list, a very, very long waiting list of poll workers to fill those spots. And there's one I wanted to mention to you. Uh, I don't know if any of you know Dorothy Kiskaden. Uh, we, I come to my attention that she has been continuously a poll worker for Lebanon County for over 60 years. She's creeping up on 65 years, and I just found out about this. Uh, I'd like to do something for her, but we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> I had no idea. It just um, just found out. Awesome. Yeah. And how many, what's that number uh, of poll workers, roughly? Uh, we're going to, we, in the spring it was 411. And I think we're going to have a few, we, we added a few to a few polling places, so I don't have the exact count. It That's okay. More than it just gives, I want to get the scope of, of the challenge of, mm -hmm. you know, trying to train all those folks for one day's work <laughs> and, uh, and ask that the public be patient when they're voting and then also, conversely, the, the uh, poll workers be patient with the folks coming in because there's still people are adjusting to the paper ballots and so on. There, and you know, there's a fantastic training that went on that was provided nationally and funneled through the state for poll workers on how to handle challenging poll situations, but it wasn't shared with us until our poll worker training was done. Uh, so what I'll try to do is find a way to cut the video up or have someone cut that up for us and maybe integrate it into the next poll worker training. Okay. You know, long term, upgraded website, we'll, stuff like that will be thrown up as well, but we're just not quite there yet. We're getting close. Sean, I just want to add the kudos to the job that you and your staff have been doing under very you know, strenuous and pressure filled uh, moments. And uh, you, you've kept your cool, and at least all I've seen, <laughs> <laughs> and really um, been a strong force over there to show and make sure that we have fair elections in, in Lebanon County and I think we're a shining star and we don't always get uh, the credit that's deserved but in this case you, you guys are doing a stellar job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, the, the staff over there has been stretched really thin the last two weeks so I really appreciate those words. Um, so poll workers were we're doing very well. Uh, I don't think there'll be any problem. Canvassers, we have calls out to all our canvassers for election day. Uh, just in case we have people drop off, I've contacted both parties and asked if they'd like to send us any references for further, uh, for more people, and we have a list now, a waiting list, so uh, hopefully we'll be all set for election day. Plenty of ballots. Uh, pardon? Plenty of ballots. Oh, plenty of ballots. <laughs> and the provisional ballots, if you're going to touch on those, people are curious about that if they don't get their ballot. So we, we have plenty of provisional ballots, and something I have thought about doing uh, is ordering a provisional stamp, which is what other counties do. So if you ever run out of provisional ballots, you can literally stamp provisional on a ballot that is what most counties do to begin with. Oh. So I don't know if we'll get the stamps in time, but in the event that we would run short, that is something we Then you do. don't have to run more ballots out to the poll. Well, we probably have to run the stamp out because I don't know if I'll get 60 stamps. I'll probably get one stamp in time. Oh. I don't know if I'll get the 60 order in time. But we, we're going to have a backup plan there just in case. Okay. I have a comment on the provisionals if we have a moment. Sure. Um, this was something brand new. I've never uh, experienced it or, uh, in the past elections, but People were asking if they could redo their ballot if they've already oh, submitted I forgot it. a a mail-in ballot um, and changed their mind. Can they have a redo? The answer is no. Um, but there were some around the state suggesting that they, if they want to redo it, they should do a provisional ballot. And that's can't do that. I, I mean, uh, that once you vote it, you vote it. But no. but to have that be you know suggested and and maybe even some people attempting to do that uh, is well is a nightmare for the process yeah. but uh, but you know but if somebody changes goes. their mind and says you know I, 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 can, I didn't go away I can come in uh, to do it if they bring their paperwork with them on election day, on election day mm -hmm. that gives them the ticket to uh, if they haven't voted if they haven't voted right yeah. yeah and something that many don't know about is there's also a fail safe in that if someone has a, a car accident a heart attack you know any kind of emergency <clears throat> even if they didn't request a mail ballot now that the deadline is passed there still is an emergency provision that we can work with them and we have a partnership with Wellspan Health for instance 
uh, where we take uh, ballots into people who are admitted that day, uh, and we have a we have affidavits that staff over there can sign to return the ballots for us. Uh, we just had a, two poll workers whose name I did not bring with me who had an auto accident it just happened, so we'll be getting them some emergency ballots. So there is always a way if we know about it that we can help work with people. But you can't change your mind once the ballot is submitted. Yeah. It's submitted. Okay. Uh, oh, Jim. Oh, just what Jamie was saying. Can I call on Jim? I'm sorry. Am I not calling Jim? I did get the uh, uh, Jamie, was there any reason given why people wanted to change your vote when, they were, when you were hearing these, these conversations? I mean, I could have been instead of curiosity. No. It, and it wasn't just here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, right. You know, it was around. But. I was wondering what the timing of that was, if it was. Uh, In the middle of last week, we started getting a spike. We never. I never got, had that question before, and then the middle of last week we started people calling, or a handful of walk-ins, and then um, I got a report, a call from a, a Fox reporter nationally who asked me to be a secondary source for a news story that they had heard through the commissioners, that the, uh, not you, not <laughs> present, another commissioner, somewhere in the state, they never shared their name, that uh, they, the commissioner was suggesting doing the provisional ballots as a way to update your ballot, and I told them that was, that's when I email Jamie and say what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a new one for me. And I, one other, uh, just to backtrack, did you say the high was 82 percent request in the past? And yes, like, well, I'm and sure. that would have been for the first at post Act 77 vote. It was a fall of 20. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say it was in COVID. Yeah. So it's pretty would have been general twenty. And actually, I'm a little surprised. The numbers overall were much higher too, but the ratio. I'm surprised the ratio is is what it is. Where I'm surprised it's been fairly consistent with the one down primary. So I, I thought that might have dropped off too. Yeah, it would have been COVID and, and the general election. I think of twenty. Yeah, yeah. Commissioner Wood says. Yes, Sean. I don't recall if you said that I missed it. What is the breakdown between Republican and Democrat on those return ballots? Oh, I happen to have that here. I did not I say that. I was thinking you would have that. <laughs> Which election would you like? Uh, oh, the one we're in. Okay, so the one we're in is, it's the longer. Of the 7146, I guess. You have uh, a 59% return rate for the Republicans at 2374 returned, and you have a 61%, almost the same, for the Democrats at 4083. And for con contrast, in the spring, we had a Democrat response rate of 48%, so they're up to 61%, and the Republicans had a response rate of 45%, they're up to 59%. Hmm. Those are really good numbers, and they're pretty close. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, I did have one other question. Um, just for a clarification, when we're talking about these numbers, is that strictly mail-in, or does that also include absentee ballots? I'm rolling those together. Those two numbers to get. Uh, I just wanted to address some real quick things you might have seen if you stopped by the office. We have a couple of new procedures. Uh, with the approval of the Runbeck machine, we are moving to a new way of organizing the ballots as they come in. Uh, we are moving to alphabetize all the ballots so we were more easily able to audit and reconcile those ballots, which is something instead of doing once through the election, we're now doing on a daily basis. Uh, it's requiring more volunteers, and we had COVID hit a couple, so we we're down. I'll take anybody I can get. I could use about four uh, in the next two days. Uh, and that would be not for canvassing. That would be strictly for helping just process mail. There is a difference. It's not pre-canvassing the process mail. We're not, we're not making any decisions on ballots. We're just doing the mail. Yep. Uh, also, I wanted to mention, I'm sure you've noticed there are now cameras, well, multiple new cameras in addition to our existing cameras on the Dropbox outside to uh, make it even more secure. So those are being recorded, and we will save that recording and put it in the archives when we're done, if there's ever any question. Sean, since you brought that up, I was challenged um, on, actually on Facebook, by a woman who was claiming that she filed a uh, complaint with the Department of State, and that complaint was that the law says that you cannot film voters who are, um, you know, placing their ballots in mm -hmm. a ballot box. So I had said, well, gee, you know, you're not seeing their ballot where they're filling it in or mm -hmm. them filling it in. You aren't seeing the completed ballot. It is the envelope. But she still interpreted that. And then there's a procedure where the district attorney gets involved, the Department of State gets involved, <coughs> mm -hmm. and 
So um, I think that we, I know that we will do whatever the state says, but the bottom line is that um, I don't think we can make the determination if that is intimidation or not, and that would require higher-ups to tell us their interpretation. I welcome the sunshine. Uh, it's uh, drop boxes are monitored by camera everywhere in yes. the state. They were already monitored by camera here. Uh, we put the camera on top of the drop box quite intentionally for transparency so people could see. I, I felt the camera that was on it already it's kind of, it wasn't hidden, but it wasn't something that would be very obvious. So I thought by dropping the cameras right there, it would be more obvious and more transparent. So they would be so aware. Yeah. If someone wants to look into that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying so that no one is surprised, there mm -hmm. has been a filing, and I was just bringing it to the attention so that, um, again, uh, I see um, validity in both arguments, so mm -hmm. it's not... It's something that's going to be, have to be a directive from the state, I believe, if yeah. they don't want, like it. Yeah, the integrity of, the, of those ballots and the uh, security and the uh, transparency, all those things that we talk about, and, you know, this is what is part of this. And some counties are actually having a guard stand mm -hmm. next to the box. They pay somebody to stand there all day. Uh, to. So I think that's intimidating. That would be... Uh, yeah. Uh, to me, uh, or somebody from the DA's office even, to, so that if they see put, them putting more than one in, they can, you know, acknowledge that right away and, and cite them. You yeah, know. Berks County is, uh, there's some controversy in Berks County right now because they have a uh, sheriff's deputy posted at the box mm -hmm. and, and they're questioning them, wow. you know, do you only have one, is it yours? That's been controversial, to say the least. Yeah. yeah, we did put some signage up to enhance the <coughs> awareness of you can only put your ballot in, you know, it's one per customer. Yep. So, uh, you know, try to just make it as clear to the public because it's a new, relatively new uh, mm -hmm. you know, offering. And, and I'm, I'm sympathetic to the privacy angle of this. I am always erroring on the side of voter privacy first, uh, but at the same time, it is a public public place at the courthouse and we do have to monitor the box so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with this I'm very more than I'm very completely comfortable with this decision but we'll follow the like I said I I did what the law required <clears throat> yep. um, with follow-up but at this point um, it's it's in higher hands than ours mm -hmm. okay I'm good if you have any other questions is there any action needed you have a grant you have a grant <laughs> that was what originally brought us in here is it this uh, yeah. well they do uh, we so uh, the the have a grant this is an existing grant we already have a signed document uh, from when it was originally passed and approved this is just an update with updated dates for this year because we hadn't used these funds and I began using these funds a couple uh, a few weeks ago now so after the state realized that I was using the funds, they came back to me and said, oh, we need the document re-signed with current dates. That's all it is. It's the same document that was signed uh, otherwise from the dates uh, two years ago. And that's $11,355 a week? Yes, $11,355. So. Sure, it's a motion. I lost track of whose turn it was. <laughs> second. It's been the second that we revised the and these funds, it's worth noting, are very narrowly defined, their use is very narrowly defined for uh, mail-in balloting expenses that are incurred only since Act 77. So I can use them on rolling mail-in trays, uh, I can use them on um, things like that. It's not a very big grant, but it certainly helps us. Okay, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so move. All right, Sean. Five days ago. Okay, get a couple home runs now in the next couple of days. All right. Uh, anything else, Jamie? I just, I just wanted to announce uh, something that, which many people may already know, but they had, they had a military bre appreciation breakfast uh, on Tuesday. And um, I, I, I heard this, but I didn't realize it was two years in a row that there are 